Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. It is the blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media sign of black in and shining again, asking you to hit that share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Here's the deal, y'all. Um, at the end of it all, I'm not an enemy to Sergeant Willie Pete, and I'm not an enemy to a non-black man and light-skinned motivation. I'm I don't always agree with everything they say because I have a different mind. I'm supposed to. I'm a different person. I'm supposed to think independently and as are they. So I can learn from both. But um, and if either one of them hated me, um, they'd probably be right, but for the wrong reason because we don't really know each other in person like that. Now, this being said, there's this movie, uh, I mean a sitcom, and I'm gonna come back to it later. In Sergeant Willie Pete's last video, The Deficiency Mindset, um, he plays a clip from a previous interview held a few years ago, and I don't remember the name of the man being interviewed, but the point he makes is valid. And I'm glad Sergeant Willie Pete put this video up. And here it is. The man says to the women interviewing him, we're trained to assume the worst about each other. Fast forward to today, and I know that the real truth is they're trained to assume the worst about us. That's really what the hell it is. Now, I was shown to assume the worst about them, about sisters. And I mean Western sisters. I wasn't just brainwashed into it. I was actually taught and oriented to not do this when I was growing up. Later on, I came to learn over time that I should assume the worst because, well, you know, my most pessimistic ideas uh, were true. Definitely. None of my children are planned. I was the dumbass. But by the same token, um, I also know that there was no better option. There's nobody out there that would have been with me and not tried to plan something like that. Nobody. There was nobody better than those who I found. Everybody else was even worse. Welcome to the West. The wild, wild West. Now, in this video, this man said, as an example, if I stand in front of an audience of black women and I say to them, I don't date black women, I, and I don't date white women, and I don't date women, the assumption would be that he's gay. And some would say, well, why does it have to be the worst assumption? Well, to many women, that's the worst assumption, which is exactly why Western black women would make that assumption. You see, I understand that some of the things that can ruin a man's libido um, don't make him gay. And that's one thing a lot of women get confused about. So you can't talk libido out of men in general. But as Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said, erections are not maintained in the presence of fear. And that's very true. You see, you can terrorize, torture, traumatize, or starve the libido out of men. Fasting actually helps with that. Fasting, when the person decides to fast, is the least traumatic way to tame the libido and, and actually reduce it to a single digit percent of its norm. Stop and think about that for a second. This is why fasting is recommended for us. And it doesn't work that way for women. Now, if they actually get to a point of starvation, their libido may go away. But for men, it can simply be fasting and their libido will go away. For women, the beginning of fasting actually spikes their libido in many cases. A lot of single Muslim women don't like the beginning of Ramadan for that reason. And I look at them like, good. Maybe now you'll understand that your purpose actually is to relieve this thing in your husband and you can get the relief. Now throw your feminism aside, especially if you're going to hold on to hypergamy. So that being said, I would recommend this again for you gentlemen, like I did before. Fast. Why do I say it? Because I hate women? No, but because I don't want them to even have that kind of influence on you. I don't want that to be the case. Just go ahead and fast.
Because as long as you are sexually interested in them enough to pursue them and to try to satiate that interest, they're going to exploit it for everything it's worth. They have to know that you can go without them. And that's why polygyny is allowed in our faith for men, not for women. That's called polyandry when they do it and that's not allowed, not even for an identical twin brother. There's a reason for that. Because what God gave to women, he also knows of their propensity to abuse. And he gave instructions that would prevent that from the very beginning. One of the instructions is that when a couple is in a conflict, the man is to not stay in the same place as her. Sleep somewhere else. You withdraw. Don't let her say, go sleep on the couch. If that's the case, you get in the bed. You must volunteer to go sleep somewhere else, like in another bed or something like that. You don't sleep with her while she's being disobedient. If she keeps it up, you can try mediation. Then after that, you bounce on her. You leave her. Now, some say, well, wait a minute, Blackheart, you're trying to skip the verse about striker. That verse, um, yeah, that verse about striker, number one, was not carried out. But number two, um, apparently it had some kind of verb that meant that uh, the force was too little enough to bring her to her senses. We now live in a world where it won't even bring them to their senses. We know it's not gonna work. And Edward Anderson has said that you have to have at least that option to pop her for that to work. That's very true. Now you don't have the option to pop her and get away with it, even in Eastern countries, so you might as well go ahead and skip that step. To be told, not being willing to slay, stay in the same bed with him usually precludes, precludes the need for that and the option to marry another wife and the fact that she knows that you could simply um, eat an early breakfast before the sun comes up, not eat the rest of the day, and she does not stand a chance to get in your drawers. For that to be the case, mm, that bothers her. See, in the West, you're fighting fire. And you're trying to fight fire with ice. Now that that's fine when ice actually melts, but you know, it's gonna take a while. So that being said, um, yeah, that being said, I'm just gonna tell y'all straight away, tell y'all like it is. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all what I saw in this sitcom that really told me everything that you need to know. And here it goes. In The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I don't know the season and I don't know the name of the episode, but there is an episode in which a lady walks into some banquet or something and Will is like, uh, yeah, hormones to Will, hormones to Will. So he goes to holler at her and she turns out to although be the daughter of a well-off black man, she turns out to be one that wants a thug, a street dude. Now, at the time that this sitcom came out, I was not allowed to say something like this. But that was true. This was going on. There were girls in my own neighborhood, which was a nice neighborhood, that wanted street niggas. They could not stand guys that were not street. So they actually disliked a lot of the guys from my neighborhood to a certain extent. Now, her father wanted a man for her that was Harvard and Princeton material. So he was too far in one extreme, and she was too far in the other extreme end of the spectrum, and Will was caught in the middle, so now he had to perpetrate two fronts to be two things to two people. He got caught in the middle, got tired of it, and finally he just straight said, you know what? When he was finally faced with both of them at the same time, he just said to them, you know what? I'm neither one, and you two need to have a talk and work some things out, because I'm not the street dude that she wants, sir, and I'm not the Princeton dude that he wants. And he walked off with his head down and dejected. Look, what should have happened, really, was that there should have been a caption underneath to say that really what should have happened is that the father should have came and talked to her, the daughter should have talked to the dad, and the dad should have realized, you know something? If he was a normal guy and he was still good for you, that would be good for me too, but you were the one that drove him away. In other words, to make it realistic, the dad could have stepped forward and said, now I see my error, but I don't think you see yours. And she could have said, well, I don't need, I don't want some lame. And he could have said to her, and that 
is exactly why you probably need to stay single for the rest of your life because you don't understand what real adult life is like and apparently I didn't teach you enough about man about men and manhood so um the problem is that Will was the one that she needed and the one that the father needed simply because he was actually normal he was sustainable Every man's not going to be as successful as the father. Every white man and every black man, as a matter of fact, most men in the world in any country will never be that successful. That's not the man's fault. But a man should not have to be uh, the street dude that every other street dude is afraid of, and he should not have to be the rich dude that every other rich dude is jealous of in order to qualify to get a regular run-of-the-mill confused child like her. And right now, that is exactly what the hell is going on. So when you listen to these PUAs, they're not addressing this. They're not addressing the mind effery that you're being put through, that even they've gone through and either recognized and accepted as being okay or not recognized and are unwitting uh, victims thereof for that reason. And they're sitting up and they're saying to you that that's who they are. You need to adjust to who they are. No. Uh uh. They're always going, see, sisters are always going somewhere from some other environment and then adjusting to those environments, to the men from those environments. You, on the other hand, are the only one that is told to adjust to her effery and her dysfunction. It's only you. And even then, to be honest with you, usually it is the regular black man. It is not even, there's even 20% of black men that don't have to adjust to them. And that's why they don't even understand how bad they, they are. They really don't know. But then there are those of them who do know because they've been on both sides of the spectrum and they need to understand the duplicity of these women. Not because the women have their preferences, but because they lied about them. That right there should tell them everything and they're not addressing that. When they do address it, what are you hearing? Well, they mad, they're wearing a mask because of your hypocrisy. No, they're wearing a mask because of their own hypocrisy. That's all it is. They're lying when they say they can't find a man on their level. No, they can find men on their level. They, you see, I'm gonna leave you with this. They can find men on their level for the most part. But one man posted something. He posted a meme on social media and he said, a lot of women are single because a good man is just not their type. That's true. He was telling the truth. Yeah, this is very one-sided coming from me because the one-sidedness of it is what makes it accurate. Many women are single because a good man is not their type. Many men are single because the women with the character and the attitude necessary to be with a man don't have the body type to be with a man. They have control over the body type. They don't have to control their height. We don't eliminate them because of that. They can control their body mass index. So they still have options we don't. And the thing is that when a woman tried to say this mess in her meme on social media, I looked and underneath that I saw a comment from actually I think he's one of my colleagues and I saw this comment that said that's not even a wise statement that's not some wisdom that is a confession against women that she just made why is it that they can't have the attitude to keep a man if they also have the body that is in shape she just confessed that they can't come with the both of them together. And those two are not even mutually exclusive. Whereas when it comes to us and how they judge us, again, they have mutually exclusive standards. You have to be what every other woman wants, but have no kids, have nobody else. Although if you do, she still don't want you because you don't have anybody else, there's no competition. So then you're out because of that. You have to be loaded but you also have to have a lot of free time you have to have the stamina of the young guy but the wealth of the old man and the free time of the retiree are you effing kidding me that's actually what they are looking for you can't have the attitude but you got to have the height that would justify the attitude if they had it mutually exclusive standards that you have to meet 
and yet they won't meet two that are not mutually exclusive simply because that would be too good of a deal for you. Like I said, they are simply about one thing in the West, making sure that the stress they bring you offsets the satisfaction. And there's really, there's really nothing else deeper than that. They have other motives, but there's really no motive deeper than that one. Because let's say you do trick her. Let's say she thinks that you got all this stuff you don't have. So she bends over on the first. Assalamu alaikum, shlona. If she does fall for it and she bends over your couch and you tap that and you catch one of them good ones. And let's say you, you catch one of them good ones and you cream pie that surface. You don't even pull out. Now, she's looking to get a payday off you at some point. Now, let's say she finds out that you ain't got nothing. It was all a front. You rented out a nice Airbnb and you rented an expensive car for a weekend and fooled and you got them drawers. Okay, now she's mad. She's going to get her pound of flesh one way or another. Now, when she finds out that she's uh, pregnant, she's going to be mad because you got her pregnant, but you don't have nothing. She's going to be mad at you for that, and she's going to still use that baby to get what she can out of you. Blood from a turnip if she can get it. And if that ain't enough, she may get somebody to beat you up or something. You don't even know what it's about. She may try to get somebody to rob you so you can't make the child support payment one month, and then she gets you thrown in prison because, uh, or jail because of that. She's going to get her pound of flesh and her vengeance because you got them drawers, and you didn't go through the stress of getting all this wealth. Then if she finds out that she is not pregnant... She's still gonna probably tell you that you are. Now, let's say she tells you that she's pregnant. You about to have, you about to be a dad. And you're like, I know it's not mine because I had a vasectomy. Now she's mad about that. Because now she has no legal way to make you go through more stress to offset that relief that you got for them few seconds in her vagina. She will obsess about getting even with you because the deepest motivation she has is to simply make sure that she brings you stress and drama that exceeds the relief you found inside of her. All other motives are there, but none as deep as this one. How dare somebody come along and look at a broad like this and justify why you should continue to pursue her? You should look at these men if they really know this much about women and you should ask them why did they leave that part out? Because that defines the relationship in the West between the men and the women. Even in, uh, even not in the West, per se. They ain't trying to be too cheap. Ask them that question. Bring them that knowledge and then ask them that question and see what happens. Tell me what their responses are. I hope this benefits and I hope one day it's not true anymore. Until then, I hope it helps you and benefits you. Black instead of black. Sign a black out. Assalamu alaikum and heterosexual black male power just because... Boom, she can, bon, and her minions don't like it.